Welcome into the Broncos Breakdown. I'm Matthew Peterson here with some injury news to report on. And unfortunately, there's some good, but there's mostly bad news. As you may have already heard, Justin Simmons has been placed on IR with a quad injury. Mike Kliss was the first one to report on it. And that's a big blow because it's never a good time to lose Justin Simmons, right? But you also just never want to lose the best player on your defense. Now, going on IR means Simmons will have to miss at least the next four weeks. So, a bummer for sure. You don't want to see anyone go down, and especially for someone like Justin Simmons. Now, that means he is going to miss games against the Texans, 49ers, Raiders, and Colts. And he could return after the bye against the Chargers. So, that's the upcoming slate of games right there for the Broncos. It's crappy to see, especially for someone who is at the caliber of Justin Simmons, an all-pro safety, all right? You look at his week one pro football focus grades, and one, it only makes sense. An overall grade of 74, but his run defense and his pass coverage was below 74, so... How are you bet? I don't, uh, the nerds at PFF sometimes are a little weird. But that was his grades, right? It doesn't really add up. But we know Justin Simmons. He's awesome. I don't need to explain to you why this is a bad thing to happen. You don't ever want to lose the best player on your defense, in my opinion. Now, with Simmons going down, it's going to be Kareem Jackson and Caden Stearns. And maybe more of DeLaron Turner Yell, who we did not see in week one against the Seahawks. He was inactive. Could be P.J. Locke. There's also another name on the screen right now, a new name, Anthony Harris, who we'll get to in a moment. But that's the current safety room. If you are nervous about the Caden Stern show about to begin, don't be. One, I liked him last season. Two, Kareem Jackson is pretty confident in Caden Stearns, okay? Zach Stevens tweeting out, Kareem Jackson said Caden Stearns has played a lot of ball at a high level. I expect him to step in and play great. He was a day three pick out of Texas last year. I liked what I saw out of him last preseason. That's really the most we ever got to see out of him. But I'm not overly concerned about Stearns having to get meaningful minutes. I'm more just bummed out that Justin Simmons isn't going to be on the field because he has been a staple, not just this defense, but of this team for the last handful of seasons. So let's show Simmons some love from Broncos country. Spam 31 in the comments section right now. That way he knows that he is a very, very much valued member of this team. And we are all hoping to see him back on the field ASAP as possible. Okay, Mike Kliss now reporting not only Simmons going on IR, but that the Broncos are signing former Viking safety Anthony Harris to the practice squad. Justin Simmons going on IR, four games minimum with quad. Uh, Isang Bassi promoted from practice squad to active 53. We saw this happen a little bit last year. Remember when the Broncos brought in HaHa -Ha Clinton Dix and Travis Fulgram? Now, they placed these guys on the practice squad first because, one, they don't want to just lose a roster spot. They don't want to cut someone, and that guy gets scooped up from another team. So they bring him on the practice squad. How, much, how in shape are you, right? Do you need a week to get your legs underneath you and get ready for actual NFL football? Or, hey, we see why the Eagles cut you as a surprise cut before they traded for C.J. Gardner-Johnson, and we're not really all that interested. Now, Anthony Harris has had some great seasons in the NFL. Go back to 2019, which isn't all that far back with the Vikings. Played in 14 games, career-high six interceptions. Down year in 2020 with the Vikings. They ultimately decided to move on. Philly brings him in for a year, and then after training camp and preseason, they opted to go a different direction. So that is the signing right there. I wouldn't say this is a Justin Simmons replacement, but it's a start at just starting to add some more depth to the safety room. All right, with Simmons out on IR due to the quad injury slash thigh, we move on to the next injury report note where I bring some good news at least. Billy Turner, who's been coming off that knee injury, Missed week one against Seattle. Nathaniel Hackett today at his press conference said that Turner will be a full participant during Wednesday's practice. That's great to see. Not because Cam Fleming was a disaster at right tackle. In fact, when we all heard that Cam Fleming was going to start over Calvin Anderson, there was a bit of like, what? Is this? 
I, I, I remember thinking to myself, am I dumb for not knowing this was happening? And I was like, no, okay, we're all on the same page. Like, this was strange and sort of out of the blue. But Fleming did pretty well, especially in run blocking. Uh, him and Quinn Miners were opening up some holes on the right side of the offensive line for Gordon and Javante Williams. They could just hold on to the football. Uh, but once Billy Turner returns, I expect him now to take his old spot back. Because listen, if Cam Fleming was not unable to, if Cam Fleming was unable to, excuse me, Calvin Anderson was unable to hold down that right tackle job during preseason and training camp, decent chance they'll opt to go with Billy Turner, who was not on IR. If they were worried he was going to miss a handful of weeks, they would have put him on short-term IR. He would have missed the first four games and they would have had an extra roster spot. Now, talking about Cam Fleming, though, I found these numbers kind of supportive here. Look what PFF said about Fleming back in Monday night. Overall grade of 66.8. Pass blocking suffered, according to them, 57.8. But his run blocking, 82.8. If Turner's unable to go, what I'm expecting to see is Billy Turner will practice all week. Sunday will roll around, and he'll go on the field two to three hours before warm-ups, and they will test out his knee, and they will see if he's ready to go, and he'll make a decision for himself. And if he's unable to go, and he's like, you know what, it's the Texans, I've got a long career, I'm not going to lose it for freaking Davis Mills in Houston, then it'll be Cam Fleming most likely again, which isn't the worst thing to happen. All right, we've got some more injury news and other notes to get to, but first, if you are looking for the latest injury reports surrounding your Denver Broncos, make sure you hit that sub button right now. You'll never miss out on breaking news coming from Hackett's mouth in terms of what's going on for the Broncos starters on the injury front. We'll keep it on the offensive line for the next injury news to get to. This is Quinn Miners, who left Monday night's game in the first half with a hamstring injury. And unfortunately, well, this is good slash bad news, okay? It isn't the worst thing in the world. It's good slash bad news. So here's the Quinn Miners update for you. And Nathaniel Hackett said he is not expected to put him on short-term IR. And so that's good to see, right? Which means he would have missed the next four weeks. So if they're not going to place him on IR, then that means they are expecting him to be able to go unlikely this Sunday against the Texans, but the Niners next week or the Raiders after that. So some good, some bad right there in terms of minors. He's not going on IR, but he's probably going to miss, be missing some time. I doubt he'll be ready to go this Sunday against Houston. Now, how do minors fare in his brief time uh, with the, uh, excuse me, uh, Graham Glasgow uh, fair in week one. Those be Glasgow pictures. That's my fuck up. All right. Um, we're going to keep going, though. So how did Graham Glasgow fare? <laughs> um, he had 48 snaps filling in four minors after he went down. An overall grade from PFF of 50.1 sounded about right, right? Pass blocking, 72.2. Run blocking, 41.2. So all in all, Glasgow, when he went out there, it was kind of obvious why he – a, was asked to take a pay cut, and if he didn't, he would have been cut. And B, while he lost his starting job, two minors, which is you are an issue in terms of what we want to do schematically on offense, which is we want to run the football with speed, with pace. We want to get off the line of scrimmage and get to the second level. That's something minors excels at. Glasgow, not so much. All right, what is your confidence level in this offensive line, though? Scale it for me 1 to 10. 1 being you're hitting the panic button and the world is ending. 10 being this is an all-pro offensive line with five future Hall of Famers. It's not. So I'll go 5.6, right? 5.6. I'm above 5. 6 sounds too good right now. Okay, so no, that's harsh. 6.1. I go just above 6, but we're not going to go get carried away with it. 6.1 is my grade. All right, that's going to do it for us on today's show. I appreciate all of you guys for tuning in, making us a part of your day. So if you haven't already, Broncos country, let's ride and subscribe.